Yeah, no, um, obviously disappointing day on Saturday. You know, I had a chance to go back and watch the tape and look at uh, look at all that happened. And uh, a, a lot of a lot of credit to Indiana for playing really, really a clean football game. And B, you know, just not our best football in any area. So uh, disappointing. It's just kind of an opportunity for us to kind of get back to get back today and get to work and try to improve that. Um, we have obviously a great, great, great test ahead of us, but uh, um, we're excited to move forward. So with that, I'll take all your guys' questions. You watched this defensive film. Was, what were your main takeaways of, about why you struggled on defense to that level? Yeah, um, we, we struggled at the corner position, you know. Um, so, you know, they they isolated some one-on-one -on -one throws and one-all. I mean, those are 50-50 balls, you know, so you're – you should come down. You should win fifty percent of the time, and uh, they they won most of them. Um, we, so then we were kind of little, maybe a little bit more off, and they took a lot of free access. But really, the game came down to me to, to, to the run game. You know, we were not able to stop the run, um, <clears throat> and really, in some in some cases, in some like as I said the other day, like some inexplicable, like we're blitzing into the run, and um, there's an unblocked defender, and we just just didn't tackle, didn't play well. You know, um, in the second half, you know, I mean, go back for that game now. It's it's 14-7 with four minutes left in the in the first half, and we call that the middle eight. You know, the last four, the first four. You know, we, we've 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 been tr historically very good in that area, and um, you know, we weren't <laughs> we weren't good. And uh, you know, you as a head coach, I think you always have to start with like, what do I regret? What do I not regret? You know, coming out in the second half, um, it's 28-7. We drive the ball down there. It's fourth and eight. Fourth and nine, you know, probably should have kicked a field goal there. You know, the analytics say no. The analytics say go go for it. And there's a big part of me that like does wants to show the guys that like, you're you're always playing to win. And, and it felt like a lot of times in that game we were playing not to lose. And I think defensively, the minute you lose that edge of I'm playing to win, where you're trying not to lose, a really good defense becomes very average very quickly. And so, but I put them in harm's way in the second half by you know going for them fourth down, trying to get back in the game. You know. Um, at the same time, I probably shouldn't have done it. I don't know that I regret it, if that makes sense. Like uh, I kept saying to GIF on the sidelines, hey, I just can't, I can't, I can't wave the white flag. I can't not try to get back in this game. But to answer your question, so I think that's what made the score so bad. Um, but, you know, we, we, from the very beginning, we, we were not tackling at the level we're capable of. We were not, we were not, uh, that first, fourth and one, third, third and one, you know, if an unblocked defender there, it doesn't make the play. So we just, just was bad, bad all around. were going for none and, and they were getting them for 20. How would you size up just the perimeter blocking and, and where that's at right now? Our perimeter, perimeter blocking has been a deficiency for us the entire year and continues to be. Um, you know, um, like even on the first drive, of the, the second drive of the game, you think about the game, right? We start with the ball on the one yard line. We get a couple first downs, we punt the ball. Then the next drive, we drive the ball all the way down to the 15 yard line, we fumble. But you know, there's a, they blitz the they blitz off the edge. We have a bubble screen out there. Sh should get thrown out there. Doesn't get thrown out there. Okay, whatever. Well, on the first drive of the second half, we we kick it out there, and Jacory just gets tackled because we we don't block the safety. Um, you know, there, there's an execution component of all this that uh, I hate when coaches say, "Well, we just didn't execute," right? Like that's to me, that's like a cop out. But what I don't like is missed assignments. What I don't like is you know not not knowing what to do. And so in many areas. Uh, things happened fast in that game. They pressured us. We kicked the ball out, and um, either we ran, you know, we run into the defender, or we don't, you know, we don't make the block. So that that whole component of our game was lacking, and it's something that they did. They did, you know, on the goal line. They did at a high level. They did a couple times. You know, they they took advantage of their RPOs. Um, so it's an area that we have to be better at. What's your, what's your challenge to your assistant coaches as they take the players through both the fundamental drills and just the preparation this week for how they can get the players better in a short amount of time? Yeah, you know, the, 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 it's, it, you know, Keith, Keith told me, you know, I, I do a good job in season of just staying very locked in and not, not reading stuff and listening to stuff. But, you know, Keith kind of said, like, hey, he said to me, say, hey, you know, your, your statement of I didn't see this coming gained traction. To which I would say, and I'm just going to get to your point, if, if I saw this coming, then you guys should all be very nervous. <laughs> like, I thought we were going to play well, and I thought we had a great bye week. And we le legitimately, Sam, I'm, I'm telling you, we legitimately, like, worked on these things over and over. No, sometimes, I mean, no one's going to want to hear this. Sometimes it may maybe it'll show up this week, maybe it'll show up the next week. But, like, these are not, like, these are not things we haven't done all year, all spring. 
you know, we got to that moment and, you know, we just didn't do the things I know we're capable of doing. And so I hate when coaches walk in after a game and say, hey, that's on me. Like, but I really felt that way because, like, I know what we're capable of doing and we didn't do it. Like, I did, I, we just weren't ready for that moment. We weren't ready for that game. We weren't ready for – and it felt like that all the way up. Even in pregame, it felt awesome. So to your point – I think there's a, I think there's a challenge sent to the coaches. There's also a challenge sent to the players. These are grown men. Like you're supposed to block that guy, block him. Like block him. Um, there's there's a couple of plays. Where Emmett spins out of one, and, and if the guy would have blocked the safety on the backside, he'd gone for a touchdown. Like I, I, can, I just show the guys as a team how much we all affect each other. You know, a missed block on a bubble screen leads to a fourth and eight pick, which leads to the ball going all the way down to the twenty, which leads to a touchdown. Like everyone's got to do their job and do it at a high level. So, you know. To me, this happened to us. We allowed it to happen. It stunk. It hurt. We'll find out a lot about ourselves moving forward. You know, we'll find out about the coaches. We'll find out about the players. We'll find out about me. The what the last thing we're going to do, do is sit around and be victims. You know, so so yeah. You know, there's there's areas that we we struggled in, in that game, but at the same time, we haven't struggled tackling like like we did in that game. Like we haven't struggled getting off blocks. Like we haven't struggled like. Guys, we haven't done that, and so we did it in that game. So I think we take a today. We took a deep step back, and then we'll attack the week. You had uh, uh, five turnovers in the last six quarters. I think before that, you only had three in twenty-two quarters. I mean, particularly in the passing game, what are what are you seeing? What is Dylan forcing throws or throws not there? Are teams playing different looks on Dylan. I mean, why are the interceptions there now that maybe weren't there at the beginning of the year? I think a smarter coach probably would have just settled the game. Like when you're down thirty-five-seven, would have settled the game down. I just, in my, in my mind, the long game is that Dylan, Dylan's going to have to learn how to play in those moments, right? Like intense pressure, trying to get the team back in the game. So we probably could have minimized that. Like, you know, you go, you go through the interceptions, you know, the first one's fourth and eight. Like, if, I think if Thomas came up here, he would say, man, I'm, I have the defender outside me. I'm supposed to hook in on double. You know, it's, a, it's an option route. He caught that on the first first down. If I would have turned in and, and read the coverage right, Dylan would have thrown me the ball. It would have, have, have been a first down. The thing about Dylan is Dylan's not going to walk in the postgame press conference and say, hey, those, those ones aren't on me. You know, he's just going to walk in and say, I have to play better. And he does. Have, we all have to play better. But, you know, so we're at crucial fourth and eight. Like, if the game's a little different, maybe we kick that field goal. Dylan, he doesn't have that one there. You know, the, the, the one with the scramble, you know, he's, he's scrambling to his left. Ja'Cory sees him scramble, so he throws it to Ja'Cory. Ja'Cory takes off because that's how we teach scramble. Um, just, a, just kind of a tough play. So uh, the third one's a batted ball. So, yeah, we don't want any of those, and those aren't excuses to them, but everything's not just always kind of as it sees, seems. Um, I thought Dylan did a lot of really, really good things in the game. Unfortunately, the game plan we had going in when it hit 28-7 kind of starts to alter a little bit, right? Like, all right, well, we're going to have to throw the ball a little bit more than we maybe wanted to. Indiana's, Indiana's an elite pass rush team. And so our hope was to be able to mix the run and the pass uh, when it got away from us. Um, but I don't think people are doing anything differently. I think, you know, we're facing – each week we're facing better teams, and we have to continue to improve and play better. And um, that's uh, – that, but that all goes together, right? We're talking about the perimeter blocking. Like, you have to be able to kick a bubble out and have a guy go for 30. You know, you, Steve, you asked me after the game, like, we need a run to pop for 80. You can't – every run can't get tackled by the ankles. And so – you know, instead of you know, my, my 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 main thing in life as a coach is not to panic, not to overreact, not to change everything. Just get keep getting better at it until you're the best at it that they are. And so, but I wanted Dylan to stay in there in that game in that situation. I wanted him to have to battle through all that. You know, he went he suffered. You know, he went through three interceptions. He suffered through that, and hopefully we get a little bit better as we move forward. Um, but I, I think he's playing well. I really do. It might not seem that way to everybody, but I, I think when I watch the tape, I like most of everything that he's doing, and we'll just keep building off it because the, the teams get better and better. Well, not panic, no overreact. Do, do you have to be wary of anything with the players be, because of the nature of that <clears throat> loss? Is it no. any different when it's fifty-six to seven? What you what you are, look out for in the, in the locker room on the practice field? Uh, I, mean, I think I think you're you're doing that every week, right? No, I, I think uh, I think if you, if if you have the right team, the right group of men in the room, and you you know, if anything, fifty-six seven should 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 snap you back to reality, right? Like it's again, you know, it's like. You know, we had some we had some success defensively the last game, and all of a sudden, you know, I, I'm I'm more worried about success leading to complacency than I do about coming back from something hard. I mean, you go back and watch the tape now. If you watch the coaches' tape, there's two or three times we should have sacked guys. So the guys that were like all over the news interviews and all over Twitter talking about how many sacks they have, or that they, they didn't show up in that game, right? So to me, I'm I'm worried about complacency, and I really trust our players. I think our players just have to settle down and go back to the drawing board. You have a bunch of veteran players 
who, you know, we've had a couple opportunities to get to these big moments, and we've gotten there. It's just kind of fallen a little bit flat, right? So uh, last year, Michigan, right? And then, then we rebound from that, right? And then we get ourselves to five and three, and then we just can't quite get over the hump. And then here we are. Colorado, to me, was a breakthrough, right? Like, hey, we, a big moment. We went and played it. And then, you know, I mean, Illinois has proven to be a pretty good team, right? They just beat Michigan on the road. But that was a good, good game back and forth. But we got to overtime, and it just kind of looked like that game, right? And now here we are on the road against Indiana, a team I felt we were prepared for, and it fell flat. So part of my job is getting us to, you know, not fall flat, right? I'm not saying we were flat. I'm saying the effort falling flat. Um, but I don't, I don't worry about our guys not competing. I really, I really honestly don't. That's the least of my worries. Um, I don't. How do you work? You know, given what you've said about how you want to have your overall offensive approach, how do you go about working around a struggling run game? Yeah. Um, I think you, you you stay very focused on like what it is, right? Like I think I think um, I think it all comes together. Like what people do again, like when people just line up and play us straight up, we run the ball pretty well. You might not, maybe people, I believe that. When people pressure us, they blitz us. Uh, we struggle, like we we just out and out struggle. And so, how do you relieve that? You relieve that with RPOs and kicking the ball out in the screen. But we're, when we do that, even we have numbers, we're not getting what we want. And so, um, it's a it's a challenge. Um, and it's just one that I think you have to, you know, what do you do, put in a whole bunch of new runs? You know, no, you just, to me, you go back and say, what can we do? What can we do better? And then the shame in that game is, you know, you get down there, you run, you run the power. I mean, if you see the block by Leventritt on that power, I mean, he absolutely rocks their Mike linebacker. You know, the ball gets up inside. We get the first down. You know, it's, four, it's seven nothing. Maybe, you know, maybe we make it 7-7. Seven, seven. We feel better about the run game. We fumble the ball. Then it's 28-7, and you're kind of like, all right, we're kind of out of the run here, guys. We're going to have to drop back and throw it. And I don't know that we're going to be necessarily real, real successful for a full game just dropping back and throwing it 50 times. Though, you, when you watch the drop back game, we do, we, did a, we do a decent job in that game of dropping back and finding people open. So, yeah, that, that, is, that is what... what what makes this difficult, right? You have to try to find the, you have to run the ball to get some consistency. You're not running it, but I think it's going back and saying, what exactly are they doing? They're pressuring us, they're blitzing us, and our effectiveness throwing RPOs and run alerts and blitz relief has not been great. So, trying to build off that somehow, some way. Yeah, Jamari Butler said after the game that uh, the defense at times would have lost their confidence against Indiana. He said they would slump their shoulders, what have you, after some big plays. Do you think this team has a confidence issue? No, I, but I, I do think, if I'm going to be completely honest, my battle since I've been here has been the here we go again, which is, is predates us. <laughs> it's like, you know, oh, here we go again. Whether it's, it's just the constant narratives of tough losses or, you know, we were having some success early. The, the local narrative is always very much like, here's what they're not good at, right? So our kids are reading what they're not good at. And that's life. I'm not complaining about that. That's just, it's just, you want to complain in Nebraska? Like, you deal with it. So when things get go wrong, we naturally, in that game, to me, kind of, in some ways, it looked like sunk back into, like, here we go again. And, and I, I, I'm not saying that I saw that. Okay, I didn't feel that during the game. I was competing to the end. But that's, you know, as I talk to people, that's kind of what they, you know, they said. Um, I think it always comes down to just football. Like, like if, if you're supposed to be in the B gap, then be in the B gap. Like, don't go to the A gap. Like, touchdown hits because you're in the wrong gap. So, it, whether that's confidence or whatever. But um, it's the first time we've been down, right? We, we were, we've been up in every football game for pretty much most of the game, right? And then all of a sudden now we're down for once. So, um, this is a great opportunity for our guys. It's like a gut check to say, like, hey, if, if every time we're down, we're going to talk about our confidence, then, like, man – we better start handing out participation trophies. Like, this is a game for men to go out and battle and fight. And you find out a lot about yourself when you get knocked down. We were knocked down in the second half. Um, we were knocked down in that game. You come back, you don't point fingers. Like, I, I, I didn't think the guys threw their helmets or acted foolish. You took the loss. As bad as that loss felt, it's the same as losing seven, seven to six. You're, you're five and two. Um, find the things you're good at, build off them, work on the things you're not good at. Come back the next week and go compete. So um, all those other things like confidence and all that, I mean, I think those are I, – I very, was very direct with the team. Like, we're not going to make a bunch of excuses. Like, we just didn't play well enough. Go play better. Go coach better. Hey, the, the tempo that you guys used um, at, a couple, at a couple spots offensively in the first half and had some success with, is that 
with the system that you want to play and, and being a defensive oriented team, especially against that offense that, you know, in the offense you'll see this week, is it, is it hard to, to use that more consistently, that, that tempo and have it fit into your, your style, your game plan? I think anytime you're playing well, you know, and executing, like, I mean, Michigan won the national championship last year in, in the huddle. You know, a ton of teams that are in no huddle. The whole I, I think it, I really honestly believe it kind of comes down to like blocking, making plays, winning your one on ones, making guys miss. So, my natural inclination would be to always play with some tempo. I think it's just hard to run the defense. Uh, at the same time, you know, we're living in a world of signal stealing still and all those things. So sometimes it's easier to get in the huddle. You know, you're facing an offense that's you're facing an offense that's. Um, you know, we weren't playing great defensively. Sometimes it's easier maybe to slow it down a little bit. Um, but uh, you know, my natural inclination would probably always be to would probably always be to to play with some tempo just to keep people on their heels. But uh, I think every game's a little bit different, right? I, mean, I think every game you're trying to identify you know what you do well, what they don't do well. Again, when the game got to 28-7 and 35-7, you know, we kind of aborted what we were, had hoped to do and tried to adjust a little bit. There was another Big Ten coach this weekend whose team struggled. Tackling. He said tackling is actually the hardest thing for a defensive player to do. In your experience, is that accurate? And what what is challenging about tackling a team like Ohio State and trying to like fix something in the middle of the week before you play? Yeah, we. we, we I thought Manungai from Rutgers was an excellent back, and we we didn't tackle him great on the first series, and then after that, I thought we kind of settled in, right? You know, now we tackled a lot during that week um, to get prepared for him. Um, I thought a lot of our issues in this game were, were us. You know, we're, we're, a gap, we're what we call a gap and a half team. Like if I'm playing outside of Rob and I'm playing this gap, but I also come inside. I thought you saw a lot of guys on defense ripping and swimming up the field like everything was a pass and it was a run. Like we didn't adjust to hey they're running the football on us, and so a lot of balls got to the safeties. I think when you're asking a safety to, to tackle a big time back with 53 and a third, that's a lot. That's hard to do. So I thought a lot of our issues you know, maybe started up front in the fits. Um, so yeah, but, but yeah, tackling, especially as you get as you as you go on throughout the course of the year, pad level fundamentals and tackling are the first things to go. And so if you can find a way to prepare, practice those moving forward, you know, as you go through it. The disappointing thing about last week was it was coming off a bye, where we took a lot of time to work on the fundamentals, and that's kind of when I go back, you know, to the question earlier about perimeter blocking. Like I do believe we're repping those, but anytime something, to me, anytime something doesn't show up, you know, we're not going to just throw it on the kids. Hey, you guys got to execute. We have to rep it until until it's good enough. And uh, tackling wasn't an issue against Rutgers. It was in this game. Um, it'll certainly be a challenge versus a running game like Ohio State's. You know, I know I know we, we want to talk about last week, but, you know, we have a heck of a challenge in front of us this week. And if you go out there against Ohio State and you don't challenge them and you just want to bail and play off coverage and, you know, hope that you don't get beat, you're going to get run off the field with these guys. you got to go out there and compete. If a team beats you because they're better, they beat you because they're better. But, you know, you, you got to go challenge people, and um, that wasn't we, we, we weren't that way on Saturday uh, to many degrees, and so um, we have to be better. Pat, are your receivers getting the separation you want downfield in terms of getting open and, and some of those things when you when you look at the big picture of those receivers right now? Yeah, I think um, I think we had a lot of guys open a lot of the day. I thought um, I thought, but I do think that when we're getting pressed and press man, we're not doing a good enough job. I mean, they they play they, they, we're not doing a good, good enough job of getting releases and getting off press. So I think it's twofold, right? I think you know, it's kind of like I talked to you guys about last year. If, we, if you give us zone coverage, we have guys running wide open, right? And I do think we're pretty good at running by people and, and throwing the ball up to them. We didn't do it a ton. That, you know, we threw that one to back shoulder to Jamal on the touchdown drive. <clears throat> but um, I think you go back and look at the tape. Like if I, if I made a cut up of the press, press reps where we didn't beat the guy off the line, and some of them were really bad, like just really, really, really bad. But uh, – there are guys open, uh, you know, at other times too. So I think it's uh, it's very specific to me to beating press and getting off press. And um, <clears throat> you know, we have a lot of guys that want to play pro football, and they come here to get a degree and then you know win and then go on and play pro football. And uh, pro football is a game of press coverage <laughs> and tight coverage. Um, yeah, even for the quarterbacks, like like the guy being right here and you being that that's like the throw he threw to Fedoni. Literally two throws, that and then the over route, like that's open in the NFL. And so I thought, uh, I thought, uh, I think our guys are going to have to re recognize that people are going to come out and press us and play man, and we got to win. And then we have to go out and press people and play man, and we got to win. And um, 
everybody wants the play callers to design a play where the blitzer comes free or the guy's wide open, right? But when you face good teams, very rarely are, you know, Sat's job and Tony's job to me is to get a guy one-on-one. And then it's our guy's job to go win the one-on-one. And I think coming out of that game, I hope our guys understand that a little bit better. Um, Indiana was a good defense, and uh, they challenged us. How are you guys doing injury-wise? I know Dylan and Nash are both limping around a little bit. Just come out of that one. Yeah, you know, Nash hurt his knee, but he went back in and played. Um, I assume he'd be fine. Dylan's fine. Um, Ramirez left the game early, and Deshaun left the game early, and uh, we'll, I'm not sure their status yet for next week. As we go through the week, they were in the, they're in the head injury protocol. You, you last year after the Michigan game had you know kind of a shock the system kind of Sunday, you know, different shake it up, whatever that whatever the, the intent was there. Anything that you did differently moving into this week that you hope can have a similar effect. Yeah, um, I thought you know, this was different than the Michigan game. Um, um, th- this was this was uh, just we sat there for the last two hours and watched the game, like the first half as a, as a, as a, as a team, coaches, staff, and players, which I like to do. I you know I learned it from Coach Coughlin. You know we call it, you know, it's like the you know the Blue Angels or the Navy Seals. They debrief after every mission and guys take ownership. But really, I just want them to see how it all fits together, right? Like. Again, a, a bubble screen thrown to the left where you forget to block the safety that leads to second and 10, that then leads to fourth and eight, which then leads to the ball in the 20. You know, I just want them to see how inter- interrelated they all are. Because when we're out there, sometimes we're like, you know, you know what's happening? But it's just, just make the block. Like, just do your, like, just do your assignment. Like, and um, it's, easy to, it's, it's, it's easy to talk about that a lot when you're, you know, when you're five and one and, you know, you only trailed for six minutes in the whole season. But when you're getting your tail kicked, like we got our tail kicked, it's easy to go back and show them. Well, okay, I know, I know it was bad, but let's look at this. If we did this, if we did that, if we did this, if we did that, and hope that it grounds them and brings them back, right? And also pulls them away from, you know, again, some of the narratives of oh, we stink or this stink. Like it's all interrelated. It's all interrelated. So, you know, if you catch the catch the kickoff and don't catch it at the two. You know, catch it. You know, catch it at the. You know, let the ball go out of bounds. Get the ball. Imagine we let the ball go out of bounds. Get the thirty-five. Then we get two first downs like we did. Now the whole game's different. And so. Um, I want them to see that, and I want them to. I want them to also see like Indiana. Indiana came out and challenged us. I don't know how well we challenged them, and so I'm taking that personally. Um, now you're facing the best team, the best best team in the country, the best roster in the country, whatever they are, number four, unbelievable team. Um, if we spend the whole game playing Ohio State, looking at the scoreboard, hoping to win, we'll get our face beat in. If we go out there and challenge them because we all think we're good football players and we want to play in the NFL, and their players are going to play in the NFL. So if you're an NFL player and I'm an NFL player, then I should compete with you. If I back down from you, then I'm not really an NFL player. So I want, I want our guys to go out there and compete and see what happens, and then I want to come home and play UCLA and do the same thing and do it for five games. And we've had a, we've had a, we've had a, been on the journey of a season. This was a real, real, real down point. Let's see how we respond. It's a broad question about Ohio State and that roster you just mentioned. Is revenue sharing maybe re- reshape? The, the advantage that they're going to have in the future is that is it is a level the playing field going forward. Well, I, I want to first give credit to Ryan Day, okay, in that those those, those guys are at Ohio State because Ohio State wins and play, players want to go to a winner, okay. Make, I mean, so while there is while there is you know an NIL component to everybody, Ryan's won, right? Urban won, Jim Trussell won. You I know, mean, Ohio State's won a ton. And so kids want to go be a part of the, one of the best programs in the country, right? Why, you know, best receiving cores over the last however many years, great, all first-round quarterbacks. Um, but to your point, I just don't know if we know how revenue sharing is going to work yet. There's still no manual been handed out of, like, here's how it's going to work. But in theory, if everyone has the same dollar figures, then you, you should bring about more parity. On the flip side of that, you know, no one knows how the impact of NIL. But to me, Ohio State's roster is not about NIL. It's about guys saying, hey, I want to go play at a place that competes for championships, and you know. So for us, like we're, we, for us to get to that point, we've got to win enough to justify players taking a chance on us until we're at the top of the mountain, and then everyone wants to come. So um, you know, you can't have many fifty-six-seven wins, right? You, you, games, you gotta, you gotta go compete at a high level. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll get there. You worked, uh, Micah's on the left tackle. Was that a, was that a pretty easy move? For him? Uh, uh, I'd say it's probably really challenging. You know, he's never really truly. I mean, I mean, I, I thought it was a lot of guts by him to want to go out there and play. You know, um, we worked it, we worked it the week before, 
you know, so he's really doing it on, you know, the Rutgers game and then the bye week and then this week. And um, um, I thought he did a nice job when he was out there. And so, you know, when Mike is focused like he is right now, he's really talented and uh, he can help us. So it was good to get him out there and get him in the mix. You talked about you know, getting rid of that here we go again narrative. I mean, how do you set the example personally when, when that's existing to block that out? Just deal in fact, <laughs> deal in reality. Just watch the tape, right? Like, to me, as I, as I said to the guys that start the meeting today, when something like Saturday occurs and you're at your lowest, you first start with you, like, what can I do better? And then you turn to the tape. You don't read about, you know, or listen to the guys in the locker room talking about, well, I think it was this, I think it was that. Like, you just, hey, okay, go back. What did I not do well enough? All right. Like I said to you guys right off the bat, I probably should have kicked a field goal, made that 28-10, and just hit the ball back across the – Hit the ball back across, right? Um, but watch the film. Like even before I showed the team to the film today, this morning, I I watch it. Game's over. I watch it on the plane on the way back. Um, I watch it yesterday twice, and I watch it again this morning one more time, because all the answers are on the tape. And just like, hey guys, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Um, I think when you do that, you start with reality and you start with yourself. It doesn't ever feel like it's up me versus them. You know, I'm not sitting up there saying you guys didn't do this and you guys didn't do that. We didn't play our best game in any way, and uh, that was a team that that was a team that um, that was a team that was going to try to embarrass you if you let them. And so we took the loss. We come back and we regroup. Is, is that at all that, that that beginning of the third quarter moment there? In your mind, is it all your decision impacted by the confidence level you have in your ability to kick field goals? And, and where do you feel about that, you know, moving into these last five? Nah, games? we would have made that field goal. It was really more based on, again, the analytics are saying you go for it, right? We hadn't really stopped them. I mean, I said that in the meeting today, and most of the guys on defense disagreed. They were like, screw that, coach. Play to win. So, like, I'm just saying for me, um, you know, I got, you know, I, I just I just don't know if you're going to lose, you know, I don't want to lose, but if you're going to lose, how do you want to lose? And that's the challenge in those situations, right? You don't want to be in those situations so you're not having to make these decisions, but it's like, should we just run the ball and get out of dodge? And then, or should we, should we, you know, let Dylan have those reps of playing through that situation? Should we let the guy, Ja'Cory, have to go compete? You know, we chose to do that. We put a lot of our twos in in the fourth quarter. You know, those guys are going to play a lot of football. We let them play, but... um no, I, I think our field goal kicking is, is, is honestly it's improving in practice. We just haven't had many opportunities to do it. Um, I think Johnny's. Uh, I think he's he's getting better and better and better. That was purely to me, you know. Hey, I mean the analytics said to go for it out to fourth and eleven. Once you cross the fifty on that drive, it was just like you only have so many more drives left, man. Like you know, um, let's go make one. But that being said. Um, you know, maybe hindsight, just the impact that that loss has on the players, the the, the you know, the, the the visual of it. But that's why I keep going back to them. Like, just remember, now it was 14-7 with four minutes left. So let's just play a little bit better at the end of the half and come out of the half. Maybe we go down there and score. We move the ball great. Something could have been different. Ohio State, uh, Jim, one Ohio State question. What are the eye-popping elements of Ohio State's offense? Their run, their run game. Yeah, I mean, they... They, you know, they can, they can, you know, it's Chip Kelly, right? He's going to find a way to run the ball. I mean, they can run the ball any which way. They have an elite offensive line and defensive line. I mean, they have elite guys up front. Um, but, you know, they're, they're, they're not, you no know, spread tempo anymore. Like, they're, they're the quarterback run game. They've got two great tailbacks. Their tailbacks are special. But um, they create all different kinds of angles, and, you know, they're going to run a lot of different run schemes. They'll play with two tight ends, and then they've got, you know, outstanding receivers who if you play one-on-one, you know, they'll, they'll go to them. So they've got great, great players. They start with the run game to create one-on-ones to throw the ball, and then they have the QB run game, which, you know, as you know, is a great equalizer, you know. So, um, the, you know, really outstanding football team. How do you think that he did with, with his limited opportunities that he got? Yeah, I thought, I thought Henry did well in the things that he got a chance to do. Um, you know, also went in, played some, you know, played played on punt team, played played out at receiver, a player too. So, um, you know, he's a good football player. We're just trying to get him on the field and uh, trying to increase that as we move forward. So, um, it's hard in that you know when he goes out there, people kind of know like, hey, he's going to probably be running the football. So, but he can throw it, you know, and so maybe maybe the role increase or decrease each week. All right, thank you guys.